collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 227 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that happens every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, be sure to leave that question in the comment section of this video. And as I said, hopefully you'll be featured next week. If you do happen to enjoy the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel. It is quite amazing how many people that watch my videos that aren't actually subscribed. So please hit that subscribe. Thank you so much. So as I mentioned, this is episode 227, which means this week's episode is brought to you by VC227, Queel from The Mandalorian. And what a fantastic figure Queel is. Unfortunately, it is a bit of a peg warmer. You can still get him over here for like four pounds. And I think the reason for that is, is a couple of reasons really. I think that wave in general was overproduced. There was lots of them. You can get lots of Bo-Katans, lots of Queels. Uh, the Mithril, for example, I think was in that wave. But what a fantastic wave that was. And also, unfortunately, Queel came a little bit late. We kind of needed that figure when the series was dropping. He's one of the main characters. And by the time we got him, he was dead. And I think they were like, maybe even season two was over. I can't really remember. But I think he will be revitalized this year when that Blurg comes out. The figure that we get with the Blurg is another Mandalorian. But there's no reason whatsoever, I don't think, that you'll be able to sit Queel on top of a Blurg. He does have the barbell hips. It really is a great little figure, Queel. So... That's it for VC227 for this week's episode. And with all that being said, let's get on to the first question. It's Farrell Kappa. He says, hey, Bosk, thanks for everything you do for this community. Question for next week. Within the next year, do you think we'll get the Boba reissue with all of the proper adjustments like the card image, movable rangefinder, and chess computer readout? And if any, what other Bobas would you like to see? I'd also like to see the Mythos Boba, Prototype Boba, All Black Gladiator Boba, ESB Boba, etc. And how about an Acid Battle Damage Boba straight out of the Sala? I think everyone agrees we should be getting a carded Django with the other jetpack maybe and the infamous poncho I know a lot of the community have Mando fatigue But maybe these easy options for Hasbro could boost the profits for new tooling opportunities Quite possibly my friend. I, I I am one of those people that have got a little bit of Mando fatigue Having said that if I was to pick one or two Mandalorians or Mandalorian armored figures that I would like to see in the line it is definitely an updated Empire Strikes Back version of Boba Fett. I mean, could you really imagine a figure that looks a little bit like this, but with this quality, you know, in terms of the articulation? I mean, this guy doesn't even have the barbell hips, but it's still a pretty good figure. But imagine it looking like that. That would be absolutely fantastic. In terms of the Return of the Jedi one, I believe they did correct the computer readout on his chest. But you're right, I don't think the rangefinder moves and things like that so they could update that one but i'm not too sure if they would the other mandalorian that i'd happily have them do would be fen rao from rebels i think that would be a really really good figure in in tvc shador 23 says question for next week i open my figures very carefully to keep the boxes but i'm at the point where i'm like why am i doing this with the ghost coming and the cantina that's again more large boxes to keep with nothing in it do you keep open boxes, carded figures? I'm not buying to resell, but in mind, it's cool to keep the boxes. When it comes to vehicles, I definitely keep the boxes. You never know what's going to happen in the future. And, you know, if you end up selling your collection, then it's best to keep the boxes. In terms of the carded figures, I always used to keep the cards. I used to take the figures off really, really, you know, nicely to not damage the card backs. But then I thought, I'm keeping a carded sample anyway. Why on earth am I doing this? I'm just keeping stuff for, for the sake of keeping it, basically. So... I went through a tidy up and I got rid of all of my sort of card backs and empty bubbles, if you like. They are long gone. But vehicles, 100% keep them, my friend. Especially when it's a lovely box like the ghost box is going to be. You, you need to be keeping that. Daniel Graham says, hey, Mr. Boss, great video. Do you think Hasbro will release a four pack of clones with differing hairstyles like they have featuring in the Clone Wars? They've released a lot of different clone head sculpts, but never a regular clone with the Gree Clone Wars hair. I personally would buy two or three so i think anything is now possible with that new clone body that we have i feel that they could do army builder packs where they just give us four straight 501st or 327th that would be absolutely perfect but then i would also be open to what i class as character packs where you get a four pack of loose figures in those white boxes but they are character packs that's where you get four named figures and you only need to buy one because that's a character. You don't need more than one of the characters. 
whereas the army builders you need multiples of those right so that's the distinction between the two and i think hasbro kind of sort of need to learn that rather than hasbro giving us three figures and then one character if you like in the same pack but yeah when it comes to those character packs that i'm talking about there's no reason why considering the bodies are going to be very very similar you know to make each figure different that's the head sculpt right so there's different hair different paint apps uh different expressions on their faces all that good stuff so i think the sky's the limit with the with that new clone body now i think we'll potentially see quite a lot of that in the coming years channel member charlie howard says hello bb love the videos question for next week now that we have a good version of darth revan in tvc do you think it's likely we will see a modern version of darth malak and bastilla shan in tvc in the next few years i'm more than willing to wait if it happens first of all charlie thank you so much for becoming a channel member and also thank you so much for dropping a super thanks on last week's video i think it was thank you so much for that buddy i really do appreciate it in terms of your question you're right we do have a really good version of darth revan now and i believe it sold really well it was well received by the community and i also think the black series version of darth malak was received quite well and i believe it is quite a good seller for them as well so that for me is a pretty good indication uh, that hasbro could potentially try darth malak in tvc i'm sure it'd be well received not too sure about bastilla shan though we do already have that one in the line um, Darth Malak, I think the last time we got that was what the 30th anniversary. So, you know, the digital sculpts are there. They are there for the Bastilla Shan as well. So you never know. Maybe we could get a two pack or something like that. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But as you say, you're willing to wait if it happens. I think potentially we may have to wait for something like that with all the other stuff that's going on. But it's definitely an idea for sure. Neil Colloran says, Hey, boss, long time viewer and subscriber, just subbed to you on Patreon, then realized what I wanted to do was actually become a channel member. So you get two subs from me for this month and honestly happy to do it. I love this channel and follow it religiously. I've never done this before. Hopefully, you haven't already answered this and I missed it. So here goes my question for next week. How on earth do you intend to display the cantina? I watched the video that Hasbro put out with their mock shelf but i wasn't a fan of their display i've designed a 32.5 by 19.5 inch shelf that i could mount to the wall or potentially remodel into a bookcase it's going to be a massive space commitment i'm only doing the base offering i feel you'd have to have a coffee table for the deluxe ps i hope by some miracle we get the wolfman thank you for your videos i look forward to the next one may the force be with you first of all neil thank you so much for becoming a channel member and you tried on patreon to begin with anybody out there that's watching that would like to support the channel in that way you can do so via patreon or being a channel member on youtube thank you so much in terms of your question okay so to answer your question i've had to go handheld and i've got one of two ways that i think i might be able to display the cantina one would be in a cabinet I've got these like glass cabinets here. So there you've got my Jabba's Palace shelf. Then you've got my Endor shelf. And then further down, you've got a bit of Hoth there. So I'm thinking that I could fit most of it in there. I don't think for one minute that I'm going to be able to have the sort of coffee table footprint displaying the whole cantina. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. But this shelf would definitely be able to fit the bar and some of the alcoves and get the most important scenes from the cantina and the other way that i potentially could display it is on a shelf here now this shelf believe it or not wasn't available in the uk one this deep does not exist in the uk or at least i couldn't find one anyway so i had to buy it from america it costs an absolute fortune to get over here but it does support my barge a lot of people think i'm an absolute nutcase having my barge like that but it is really secure on the wall and yeah you can just see how deep that is there it's really deep enough for the barge and i think i'd probably be able to get a fair amount of the cantina on there as well but to be honest the first option is more likely uh, for what i want to accomplish with it but as i said not for one minute do i believe that i would be able to display the whole thing in like that sort of square formation if you like top down i kind of want to look at it front on anyway so i think in one of my glass cabinets is probably the way that i will go Chris Curran says, good day to the best vintage collection channel. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate that. It says, question for next week. What do you think about the Hasbro 2-pack for a Stormtrooper and Rebel Trooper Black Series? Oh, Black Series question. So I think I know which pack you're talking about. I think it's just been revealed, has it not? And it's, as you say, a Stormtrooper and Rebel Trooper Black Series. I guess there are people in the Black Series community that want to army build and do like photography and things like that. I would say it's a pretty good two-pack for them to do that with. However, the only negative I feel is that the Rebel Trooper 
has just got the one head and it is the most famous rebel trooper guy from star wars and new hope he's really recognizable so essentially if you're going to be buying that multi-pack yes you're getting a stormtrooper each time but you're also getting a rebel fleet trooper that looks exactly the same each time tvc we've got two four packs we've got the stormtrooper four pack we've got stormtrooper just been released again on a vintage card so you can get plenty of those if you want and we also had the rebel fleet trooper four pack as well with different rebel fleet troopers so you can see which way i'm going with which line people should collect josh but senior hi there buddy he says hi tim i'm missing the constant fun of collecting but still enjoy your videos and feel honored to be a patreon supporter for so many years i also love what i'm doing now question for next week you have a special gift of taking opinions that you completely disagree with and turning into a fun conversation or discussion without contention or mocking unfortunately this is not something that often happens in the world and in the star wars community specifically cough cough acolyte cough sequels cough how do you remain so positive and what is your process for taking on tough and contentious topics without taking to a negative and dividing point of view cheers well thank you buddy for the kind words it's not something that i was really conscious of but if that is something i do then great i think at, at the end of the day it just comes down to respect right i don't really want to be crapping over something that other people enjoy i just i don't really see the point in that of course i will have my opinions on certain things whether that be um you know star wars shows that are out or the films or the figures the toys whatever it might be i do have an opinion but i don't feel it's good to sort of essentially you know downplay or crap on something that other people enjoy as i said i will have my opinions about things which we will talk about in a second and of course i will talk more positively about the things that i do enjoy which is tvc 3.75 and things like that so I hope that's answered the question. As I say, it wasn't really something that I was conscious of, but I'm, I'm glad it's something that you've noticed. Stephen Angel says, to quote Simon Pegg's Dengar from the Clone Wars, hey, Bosk, my question for next week is, can we hear a full, unfiltered Bosk's bounty rant about the retro collection and the epic heroes lines? Because, man, I really want someone to validate how upsetting those lines, particularly the former, are at the moment. So we just had that previous question that says that I don't really sort of crap on what other people enjoy and other things that make them happy. And now you're asking me to crap all over the retro collection. <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. I could sort of have an in-between here. So for me, the retro collection was great when it first came out. Those original vintage figures on those card backs. Of course, there's issues about the card backs that I do not like. You know, this thing around here and the, and the horrible sticker. But in the main, I thought it was pretty cool that you could walk into a shop and for under £10, get yourself a Han Solo or a Luke Skywalker on that original card back. You know, everybody's nostalgia just went through the roof for that. And they sold incredibly well. That first wave, and then obviously they did the Empire Strikes Back wave as well. The issue for me is where they started doing figures from new media in that style because for me there is just nothing retro about those i remember reviewing the mandalorian figures and at the time i thought they were quite quirky and quite cool but ultimately they just went way way too far with it they released far too many they did obi-wan they've done acolyte they've done ahsoka and for me they just ended up peg warming massively and i think they just need to get back to their roots with the retro collection if they're going to continue it they need to get back to the original trilogy that cabinet up there behind here has got the original 96 in there if they're going to do anything they should just finish those basically and then also like the tarkin figure bring out other figures that kenneth never made that is exactly what they should be doing they should not be doing the witch lady from the acolyte over say luke skywalker in stormtrooper outfit it's just crazy to me that they went down that route and that is what i don't like about the retro collection but if you guys out there like it and you enjoy it and you like those new media versions i'm not too sure how many of you there are that do then all power to you mitchell gum says question for next week hey tim picking up on the now cleared up question of whether or not hasbro will release the figures outside the cantina later after the q a so i thought i understood that by backing has labs and each figure tier that we basically are paying for the tooling for each of the new figures so if that's true, then where did the figures they used in the photo shoot come from? Isn't that from the actual new tooling that we have not paid for as of yet? It's not like they are kit bashed figures. So if they have already made a newly tooled mold, then it should be given that they can release them at a later date, assuming the project funds. I could understand maybe that they would not want to produce them if the project fails as they might virtual peg warm. But either way, the tooling already exists. What are your thoughts? Maybe I misunderstand how tooling works. 
So yeah, I think if you look at those figures, the Nabron Leeds, the Ali Shush, and the Greedo, they do not look like sort of um, 3D printed resin molds or anything like that. They look to me like the tooling is well in advance and, and those figures essentially have been produced. They did say that if we don't hit those tiers that they maybe still will release those figures, but it makes it more unlikely, especially if the Cantina doesn't even fund at all, which I think it will at the end of the day. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Those figures to me look like they are well down the line of being produced. It's not like other Haslabs. And talking about other Haslabs, previously we've had like sort of, you know, versions of other characters like the Jawa and the Grogu and things like that. And then with the Ghost, it looked like we're getting all newly tooled figures paid for by the Haslab. But in actual fact, the, a lot of that tooling came from the mainline versions of those figures. That is how I believe it anyway. So we were getting the mainline versions they're paid for out of the mainline budget, and then we're getting retooled versions of them in the HasLab. This is the first time I believe that a HasLab has had three newly tooled figures in the Two Sisters and Wuha that will not be released outside of the HasLab. Um, that's kind of how they've confirmed it, although they did say we don't have any future plans, so they kind of didn't clear that up, but from my mind, the three tiered figures, they will be available at some point after the HasLab on different card backs. The three that are included in the base offering, I don't think you're going to be able to get those outside the HasLab. And Ian Mason says, Boss, does it bother you that we have to buy multiple cantinas to have woo her at the helm of the bar? I'm hesitant to support this project because I want a full cantina, but I don't want to open a very rare special cards. I wish they would include one carded and one loose figure per set. It wouldn't cost them that much and would help give loose collectors a reason to back and not worry about return on investment. The problem with that is, buddy, is that I feel without people that do buy multiples, these things may not fund in the first place. I think there's a lot of people that are going to be buying two for that exact reason. And it, that's just the way they do it. They've done it with all of the Haslabs at the end of the day. And this is a little bit different, sure, because the Woohoo is a, you know, a, a newly tall figure and they're saying that you're not going to be able to get him any other way outside of the cantina so it, there is that does it bother me yes it does bother me but there isn't really a lot i can do about it that's just how the haslabs work and i will be buying a deluxe and a standard version that's kind of a good thing where they're you know to get those other three figures you don't need to go deluxe again if you like um but of course it bothers me but it's just the way it is at the moment there's not a lot we can do about it if we want these big ticket items then we do need to rely a lot on people that buy multiples unfortunately rt2d says hi boss question for next week with the return to tatooine theme going on what do you think the chances are of getting a newly sculpted vac metalized c3po it is much needed cheers you're absolutely right a new c3po is very much needed and in actual fact now that we have all those other main characters pipelined C-3PO is probably going to be my number one figure in this year's last figure standing. He's going to be at the top of my list and also for March Madness next year as well if we haven't got him or, you know, before then. Um, I feel that they can get so much out of a new sculpt of C-3PO. There's so many other protocol droids that they could do. Countless ones from Hoth, ones from New Media, from Ahsoka and Mandalorian Season 3, things like that. They're all over the place and... As I said, quite frankly, this one's embarrassing. The scaling of him is completely off. He's far too small. He doesn't need all those removable panels and things like that. And this one is really dull. I don't think they'll go that metalized, but you know, if they can get one that's nice and shiny, like some of the figures they've put out recently, then I'd be quite happy with that. Um, at the end of the day, when he's walking through the desert of Tatooine, he's not sort of that metal anyway. At the end of Star Wars, of course, you know, he's shined up or whatever for the ceremony and things like that but more often than not he isn't sort of like really ultra shiny anyway it's kind of like they've got that from the kenner figure if if, if you know what i mean so same with r2d2's dome as well in the kenner figure it's vac metalized but really in star wars it's not shiny like that so um but in terms of c3po as a figure He's my number one now, for sure. Channel member Carl Wilson says, Hi, great Sunday viewing as always. Question for next week. We really can't be far away from getting a Peli Motto figure released on the Mandalorian of Book of Boba Fett card back. When I see the recent Mandalorian Judge and other figures that have little screen time having been released, it surprises me. The Razor Crest and M1 Starfighter are longing for their mechanic and pit droids to go along with them. 
Thanks, Carl. I, I do find it amazing that we do not have a Peli motto, but also the Black Series doesn't have one either. You would have think that would have been a surefire figure for them. And they actually released a, like a two pack or three pack of pit droids, but they didn't put Peli motto in there. They put R5D4 in there, a repack of, of that figure. So they've obviously got sort of some issue around doing Peli Motto. I'm not too sure what it is, but she is definitely a needed character from, as you say, both of those shows, especially as we do have the M1 Starfighter, which essentially she helped build. So it would be nice to get that character. When will it happen? I've got no idea, but I don't think you can really compare that to the Mandalorian Judge because the Mandalorian Judge was a repaint of the... Uh, Fleet Commander Mandalorian so so easy for them to do Pelimoto will be an all-new sculpt So it's just whether they've got the budget to do it basically Sean SS8RB says hi boss question for next week The most recent wave you reviewed has four of the first 12 Kenner figures in it with another four pipeline for next year Star Wars 50th anniversary is only a few years away My question is do you expect Hasbro to celebrate that pretty significant anniversary? Whereas they've skipped the Phantom Menace 25th anniversary and if so, what anniversary themed releases would you like to see the most? Looks like releases of the first 12 will have already been done by that point, which would have been my pick. So yeah, when you put it like that, it's pretty incredible, isn't it? That we will have most of those first 12 by the time the 50th anniversary comes along. I feel if the vintage collection is still around by then, which I hope it is, they will most definitely celebrate the 50th anniversary of A New Hope. I think they'd have to. They definitely can't skip that one for sure. Um, what would I like to see and what would they do if they've already done those figures? There's a couple of things that I would like to do that are quirky. So I would like them to do a hammerhead in his blue outfit from Kenner. I feel that they could, you know, put that out as like a quirky release to celebrate the uh, sort of 50th anniversary of Star Wars. We would already have had hammerhead by then in his like screen accurate outfit. But I feel, you know, a little hark back to the Kenner days with his blue outfit. They could do that for Walrus Man as well. But in terms of serious items for the line, I feel it would be a really, really good time to get a brand newly sculpted X-Wing fighter out there. The one that we have has the droopy wings. It's quite an old sculpt these days. And what would be a better time than the 50th anniversary of Star Wars to release a brand new X-Wing, brand new sculpt with all of the details for the vintage collection. And then they could repaint that one so many different times. And also Darth Vader's TIE Fighter be a great time to get that out as well so focusing on the vehicles instead of um the figures so much for that anniversary because as you say we would have had a lot of those figures already um so yeah that's kind of my thinking aqualish doug says i like your haslab ideas especially the u-wing so i hope that gets featured heavily in Andor season two question for next week given the scant and or offerings for tvc so far do you see them offering more to support season two i honestly do not know what they're going to do with that I think the most obvious figure that they could do for Andor is Dead Ramiro. And I think she's possibly the most important character that we need at this point from the show. And also, the reason I feel that they could do that figure is then it could open up to many more like female officers that we've seen in uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show with Tala. I think there's one from Clone Wars, maybe even Rebels. There's, there's quite a few female uh, Imperial officers and I feel that they could you know get a lot out of that sculpt very much like that they've done with the piet figure so they take the lessons that they've learned from the piet figure and apply it to dead ramiro and that's how you get that figure out others from that show i mean obviously luth and i want really really badly in the line um but i i just can't really see what else they will do we'll obviously have to see who crops up in season two of andor i believe director krennic's going to be in it you know now they've got their head sculpt maybe he's going to be in a different outfit or something i don't know We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, there's still loads of figures that we need from season one, isn't there? And this is kind of what happened with the Mandalorian. So I'm hoping that we will get more in the future. All right, then, guys, that's it for this week's episode. Episode 227 brought to you by VC227 Queel. Awesome figure. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Don't forget, everybody, if you want to be featured in next week's episode, you need to leave a question in the comment section below. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and we shall see you on the next one.